All right, guys, welcome back to the sawmill. Today's video was sponsored by our friends at Anchor. And to be honest with you, I'm pretty excited about this. I've been looking forward to doing this video for about a month whenever they reached out to me about doing this actual project with them. And today we're getting an early start. It's about eight o'clock in the morning. We're gonna be wiring up an alternative power source for the wood shop. You guys hang in there. And trust me when I say, you're probably gonna learn something today. This is a pretty neat system. Let's go check it out. All right, friends, before we try this unit out, let me show you the steps I had to go through today to do a pretty simple install that just took a couple of hours. All right, friends, the install is about halfway done, but I got it to the point to where we could test it out at least and make sure everything's gonna work okay. I have one circuit hooked up right now to this system and we have 10 different circuits coming off the transfer switch. I only got one of them going to the panel right now. We're gonna test that out and make sure it works okay before I come down here later and hook these up right here. The circuit that we're running through the anchor system right now is the one for the lights in this part of the shop. So right now we're running on the grid as far as grid power goes. We're not running off the anchor yet. It will be here in just a second when we flip over the switch. But all you gotta do is when you install these is your wire comes in from your transfer switch. There's a black and a red wire for each one of the circuits. The red wire goes to the breaker to the circuit that you want to power. The black wire then goes to the load side, which is coming off of this switch right here. Therefore, you still get a complete circuit 
when the anchor is not activated, but you can easily do that by flipping over the switch. And let me show you that. So up here on the transfer switch, and I'll zoom in here in just a minute when I go over all the breakers, we have the letter H, that breaker is wired into the lights for this room. Now right now the switch right above it, which corresponds to that breaker, which is the letter H, is on the line unit, which means the grid is powering the lights in here. Now watch this. You have a line unit, an off, and a generator right there as far as your symbols go. Right now we're in the line unit position. So you switch it up, and right there it is off. You go up one more, then you go up one more selection to the generator, and the lights are back on. So now the lights in this room are being powered by the anchor solids and not the grid. If you want to go back to the grid, go all the way down, and there you go. It's as simple as that. It's a pretty neat system. And this transfer switch keeps you safe. This is a really nice system right here. I see people doing generator hookups straight through their panel. I think in order to do it the right way and also not hurt the lineman if he's out there working on the power, I think you need this system right here with the switch. So a few details here as far as the install goes, guys. At the first of the video, you saw me uh, hit this knockout right here. I thought about putting this switch lower but I have a lot of lumber in this room. It goes through the molder and I was afraid boards may come back and hit that. So I went just a little bit higher with it, which is okay. I'm six foot two and I'll put a little step right here so I can see all the breakers if I need to. But that got it out of the way and I'm going in the top of the panel now instead of the bottom. I probably should have filmed this before I hung this up on the wall. You guys can't see me, but I'm on top of a ladder trying to get the best angle showing this little transfer switch right here. So this is the gist of it. Your power is going through this like a circuit breaker and then it goes to your panel to power up that circuit. There's two LEDs on this. You have 120 volts on each LED. So therefore you have the capacity to have 240 volts on this switch. It has 10 circuits and the mats amperage is 50 amps. So like I mentioned, you have 10 different circuits right here and the wires do have letters on them to correspond with each circuit. That makes the install really easy. I'm glad they done that as far as numbering the wires. You have two meters on the top for each leg of your 110 volts coming in. So you have meter number one and meter number two showing how much power is coming off this right here. And out of these 10 circuits right here, you have five on this side and five on this side. That meter controls five and that meter controls the other five or gives you a reading. That's a better way to put it. So what you want to do is when you install this, you want to balance out your load. You don't want too much of a load on one side and you know not as much on the other side. That could damage one of your loads on the generator. So you make sure you balance this out and have the same amount of uh, amps being pulled from each side to make it nice and even. Now these breakers are all 15 amps with the exception of these four right here, A, B, C, and D are different sizes. A and B is a 30 amp double pole breaker. C and D is a double pole 20 amp breaker. And they also have number 12 wire that corresponds with these breakers. So that's an easy way to find that wire. It's a lot thicker than the other ones. Plus it does have these letters right there on them so you can find them that way. Now the transfer switch is also pre-wired. All the corresponding wires that go to each one of these breakers is wired up that way from the factory. The only wiring that I had to do was install this plug on the front right here, which really just took me about five minutes. It wasn't a big deal. Everything else was completely done at the factory. Makes it really simple to get this thing and install it and get going. And also guys, real briefly, this is a heavy duty metal case. This thing is heavy. It's not light. It's heavy duty. It's got a five year warranty and it's an accessory that you can buy with the anchor. You can get this system with or without this switch right here. But if we're going to be powering up your house or doing a backup power situation, which is what I'm doing here, you got to have this. And it's not too expensive. It's just an add-on when you do your checkout. All right, friends, right here is the powerhouse supplying all the energy to this room right now. The Anchor Solitz F3800. Has a really nice display here on the front. Has a display on and off button in case you don't want to see your numbers or that's bothering you for some reason. USB ports right here at the bottom, on and off switch right there. Another plug right here for a nine volt. On both sides, it has various plugs for your solar charging and also so you can charge this up on the grid if you want to. 
My preferred way to charge these up though, if you have them available to you, are solar panels. I love using solar panels to charge these up because that makes it really off grid. And that's how you get your best savings in a unit like this because it's not costing you any money to keep this running. Now this right here guys is built to last. You can get 10 years of use out of this based on how many charges that you can do from zero to 100. So if you use this every day and depleted it, you would have 10 years total out of this unit as far as what it's rated for. It has a massive 6,000 watt output, which will pretty much power anything in your house as far as that goes. This machine can handle it. When you think about that output, friends, it's not for just one appliance. You can have your refrigerator, your washer, your dishwasher, your lights, your outlets, all running from the anchor right there. You can run more than one item at one time. You also have the opportunity to add battery banks right here on the side. You can plug them in to add to this to make it last even longer when you're using this to power all of your appliances or your entire house. All right, friends, like everything else nowadays, Anchor has an app that will connect to your Solit so you can control it from your phone. It shows the battery percentage right there at 97, also the temperature, which is 48. And something really neat about this, let's say you're in another room and you wanna control the output of this, you can turn that off and on right there with the app and it corresponds to the unit. So if you have your lights on in a different room, you wanna cut those lights off, there you go, it's all you gotta do. You can also turn off and on the USB outputs and also the car port as well. And the brightness of the screen, you can also change as well with this app right here. It's a really good feature. It also gives you the ability to update your system because that does happen several times a year, an update is required. I need to check on this one, being a brand new system, it's probably due for an update, more than likely firmware upgrade right there. So we'll take care of that right now. All right, friends, I have my Wi-Fi connected to the Anchor unit. And as you can see right there, we're updating the firmware and on the screen of the Anchor unit, you got the UP symbol, which means update in progress, I'm assuming. We'll take care of this, then we'll get back to the review. All right, friends, in closing here, I wanna thank Anchor for sponsoring today's video and sending this unit over for us to test out and more importantly, install here in the shop. I'll probably come out here tomorrow and finish the install and run these other circuits to the breakers. And friends, all I can say about this unit is, it's really nice to have. There's one thing for certain nowadays, and that is nothing is for certain. You can't see the future. We got massive power outages happening all the time. Just the other day, AT&T went down for over 24 hours. Who knows, the grid may be next. And if that does happen, and you got some solar panels and a unit like this, you have less to worry about. With a system like this, friends, you will never regret having it. I just ordered a second one for my house so I can have power up there in addition to the shop when the grid does go down because it will go down from time to time. And who knows, the next time it goes down, it could stay down for a while. And at least if it does, I'll have a little bit of a peace of mind that I got power down here in the shop and in my house running with the anchor. Now, if you're interested in this unit, there's links down below. You can go straight to the page where it gets you all the information from this unit that we talked about in today's video. In addition to this transfer switch, if you're buying this unit, go ahead and get the transfer switch and do a complete install. Now you may need a licensed electrician. I had the luxury of working under an electrician when I was in college years ago. So I got a good bit of electrical experience and I'm comfortable working inside of a panel like this. But if you don't have any experience with all doing stuff like that, make sure you hire an electrician to do this install for you. It probably wouldn't be real expensive to do. I got this done in two hours. And if I was gonna wire up the entire panel, you could probably add maybe an hour to that. So based on today's rates for electricians, it's not gonna be an expensive install right there, friends. Just a few hours and they'll be done and you'll have nice power to run when the power goes out because trust me guys, it's gonna go out again. Mm -hmm.